Urban exploration can be incredibly dangerous. Poor infrastructure, asbestos, dangerous squatters, booby traps, and possibly even a touch of the paranormal. Let's dive into some of the creepiest urban exploration stories. You never know what dangers could lurk in an old abandoned building. Take booby traps, for example. Back in 2019, a team of real estate investors in Philadelphia were walking through an old house they'd purchased to renovate. At first, things seemed pretty standard. The place was pretty run down and creepy looking on its own. But what the group didn't expect to find was a death trap, but they did. On the staircase was a string and attached to it was a crutch with a knife duct tape to it that would swing down if the string was tripped. Luckily, they spotted it when looking up to the second floor from beside their staircase, and one guy grabbed a long plank of wood and from a very safe distance away, mind you, tripped the string. Sure enough, the crutch with the blade swung down. Pretty terrifying. If someone had broken into the place in the middle of the night and had been looking around, didn't see the string, they could have gotten a knife in the face. Just goes to show how dangerous urban exploring just goes to show how dangerous urban exploring can be. Luckily, these guys were professionals and had renovated tons of abandoned properties before. One urban explorer found out he may not have been alone while exploring a series of underground tunnels. Urbex Hill posted a video to YouTube exploring what he described as a mysterious tunnel. He spent almost the entire day exploring this maze-like tunnel that stretched more than 10 miles, hidden deep in a forest. He had an uneasy feeling about the place. It was eerily quiet, yet he described this uncanny feeling of being watched the entire time. The video is pretty cool. The tunnel system is definitely extensive, but you would not catch me dead walking through a place like this alone. Plus, who the hell knows what's in that water? I hate underground tunnels with water. It's nasty. But the creepiest part of the video, he may not have been alone down there. At one point in the video, at a dark curve in one of the tunnels, we see this. There's chuds down there in that tunnel. Just look at that cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. When you're exploring underground tunnel systems, you gotta be ready for a chud encounter. No one knows what I'm to chud. 1984, great movie, check it out. It's actually not that great. Hayden Keist 11 comes an eerie story about a time she'd explored an abandoned mental hospital. She writes, this was maybe my fourth or fifth time going, so I was starting to feel comfortable moving floor to floor through the hospital, as it's in a very rural location on native land and isn't frequented often. It had been abandoned and largely untouched for over a decade. It's me, my younger brother, and a group of four of his friends. We move confidently through the lobby and main floor of the hospital, but the air gets thick and sticky on the second. We all get an eerie feeling in our gut we hadn't felt before. We all described it as getting nauseous from the humid, gross-smelling air we hit. We move through the rooms, three groups of two people, cautiously, as we all feel on edge and our adrenaline pumping. We get to the room of a strip of showers, like a locker room shower. Unlike previous visits where this was just an empty shower, on this visit, there was a rotting bird carcass shoved headfirst down every shower drain, 10 to 12 separate showers in there, and black paint painted around every drain in a circle. Some of the birds were already skeletons. Some had to have only been there for a day or two. They were still fresh, and the ants had just started crawling on them. We bounced after examining it. Yes, definitely bounce when you see something like that. Good call. Next up, we have the abandoned mortuary. And, uh, you know, mortuaries, they don't need to be abandoned to be unsettling. They're mortuaries. Ben James, who goes by the name Places Forgotten on TikTok, posts tons of urban exploration videos, pretty much all in creepy places, a lot of abandoned hospitals on there. But this abandoned mortuary in British Columbia was one of the creepiest he'd ever seen. There was a lot of stuff left behind. Mortuary stuff, you know, BL, double OD samples, biohazard jars of human remains, death certificates with graphic details about how the folks died, as well as photographs. He also found bone fragments, including parts of a spine. Kind of shocking just how much had been left there, scattered around, like autopsy reports, photos, all this information about these dead folks just laying around. 
From Reddit user Snutis comes the story of the Watcher Through the Walls. I was exploring an abandoned mine shaft for the second day in a row. This was in a small old midwestern town that had long been abandoned. It was also a 10 minute walk from the nearest road. The door I had gone through the first day was now padlocked shut. That should have been the first red flag. But we found an entrance from the rooftop into one of the main buildings and continued to explore anyway. After exploring about three floors of mine shaft below ground, we were back on the main floor exploring the workshop slash garage and I was looking through the cracks of light coming through the rusted metal walls when I noticed a bright color that stood out from the rest of the area. It was a man looking back at me through the cracks. I was seeing his blue sweater. I could see two sets of eyes looking into the room that we were in. After whispering to my friends that there were people watching us through the wall, we booked it out of there and jumped off the roof into the woods. The men were in a pickup truck and drove around looking for us, even getting out of the truck to look around. We couldn't see them from where we took cover, but we could hear the truck stop, the doors open, and footsteps breaking leaves and twigs only 20 feet away from us. We hid there for about 15 minutes while the men searched all around for us. It was harder than most people think to try and quiet your breathing after sprinting. It was terrifying. This next one is short, but uh, I don't want to say sweet. Short but effective. Reddit user Digitalis303 tells of a time they explored an abandoned ice plant and passed right by a dead body. As a teen, I was into urban exploration. There was an old ice plant near my house that had burned, I know, ironic, about 25 to 30 years prior. Anyway, it wasn't really underground, but was so overgrown that it felt more or less like it. I go climbing around over and under mangled concrete and rebar and graffiti for a while and finally decide I'm done. A couple of days later, I hear about how the police pulled a corpse out of there. Pretty sure I walked right by it and didn't even notice. The next story comes to us from Reddit user Andrew Zabar, The Scream. I came across a large structure with high windows. It was essentially one rather large room, two external doors, cathedral height ceiling, and windows high on the walls. Interior was painted a rather drab yellowish green, and paint was peeling everywhere. Floor was a sort of cement cracked here and there. I think there may have been a drain somewhere on the floor, lots of dirt and leaves. Then all of a sudden, the loudest, shrillest scream emanated from right smack dab in the middle of the room. We both covered our ears by reflex. It lasted about two seconds. We'd been on opposite sides of the room examining the walls and chipping paint. We both freaked out and exited each, each at the door nearest to where we'd been, circled around and met on one side. We each heard the scream come from the middle of the empty room, but nobody else was there. Also, nobody else outside anywhere we could see, and certainly nowhere near enough for it to have seemed like it was coming from the inside. Never experienced anything else like that. Next up, we have a good old-fashioned ghost story written by Reddit user GameAddict877. I was walking through the woods with some of my friends at about midnight having fun and messing around. It was pretty much pitch black in some areas, usually taking about a minute to get to the next light section. And at some point I felt somebody hold my hand. It was very clearly a small and definitely female hand. After about a minute, we finally got close to the light again and I asked if she was all right, only to look over and notice that everybody else was about two meters behind me and the only female was at the very back of the group. Almost immediately, I felt the pressure leave my hand. I never brought it up with them because they'd probably just tell me I was imagining things. Now, we've already talked about how inherently creepy abandoned places are, the dangers of booby traps, squatters, the paranormal, but aside from all of that, one of the biggest dangers when it comes to urban exploration is the infrastructure. A lot of these places have been abandoned for good reason, and a lot are left unmaintained. One very unfortunate case happened in 2021. Ethan Benar, a 22-year-old university student, tragically died after falling through a skylight while urban exploring in an abandoned dairy building in Totnes, England. 
the coroner found that he'd suffered a traumatic brain injury following a 20-foot drop onto a concrete floor. Ethan was known for his love of climbing and exploring abandoned sites. His girlfriend Charlotte Rose shared that Ethan's interest in urban exploration was driven by his appreciation for the aesthetics of these places, capturing them through photos and videos. On the day of the accident, Ethan had visited the old dairy site alone. He sent Charlotte a video from the roof before losing contact with her, and Charlotte and Ethan's mother reported him missing to the police. The video he sent helped officers locate him in the building, but he was found unconscious and later succumbed to his injuries in a Plymouth hospital. And we're going to finish off the list with one more first-hand account from Reddit. From user Yesi, the thing is, comes a story entitled, There Were Scratch Marks Inside of the Closet. And this one, it gave me the creeps. It goes as follows. I was in a house that the police confiscated from a biker gang. My job was to assess the damage for an insurance company. The walls were all painted white, and the floor was sheets of plywood painted dark red. I was going around measuring each room, opening doors, no problem. I then opened the linen closet, and it had deep scratch marks on the inside and dents on the back door like someone was trying to escape. The freakiest part was straight ahead at my eye level was a round red splatter pattern on the back wall that had been painted over with a coat of white paint. You can imagine what went on there. All right, with all that said, please be careful, guys, if you ever do urban exploration. Uh, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.